Hello and welcome to my Android development setup tutorial. Uh, this tutorial gets you set up so that you can start writing Android as well as follow any of the other tutorials I've made. Like all my other tutorials, there's going to be a written version and a YouTube version. If you prefer reading for learning, then you can go to my website and find it there. It's probably a lot faster than uh, uh, watching a video, but I know a lot of you prefer learning by watching, so both are available. And the website is, I just put it down in the description. Uh, so basically we need three things, the JDK, the Java Development Kit, uh, the Android SDK, and Eclipse. And the first thing we're going to get is the JDK. So you have to go to Oracle's website, I don't remember what it is, but you can just search JDK and it's going to be the first one that you see. So it's this one right here. And you'll see three options, the regular JDK, Java FX, and uh, Java with NetBeans bundle. We want the first one, just the regular JDK. Uh, and then there is a license agreement. You can read that if you want when you're done. Accept. And uh, make sure it's this one up here, not the one down here. Uh, and there are a bunch of versions. Pick the one that makes sense for you. I have Windows 64 bit, so I'm going to get this one. And it's 90 megs, so it's going to take a while. Uh, so I'm just probably going to cut this part out. Okay, that took a while, but it's finally done. Uh, it's an executable, so just double click, run it, accept. And I'm pretty sure you just have to hit next a bunch of times. We'll see. Next. This screen here, just ignore it and press next, don't do anything. Okay, more waiting. I'm probably gonna have to speed through this because my computer's kind of slow. Uh, while we're waiting, I guess I should explain what we're doing. The JDK is the software development kit for Java. Uh, it basically gives us the tools we need to write Java code and run Java programs. Uh, and the website is up here. Again, you can just Google it, but I'll probably put the link in the description anyway. Okay, so this is going to take forever. Uh, oh, maybe not. Let's see. So close. Is it going to finish? Do I have to cut this again? I think so. Oh, nope. No, oh, it started over. Awesome. Uh, okay, you guys can stick around now. Or you can just fast forward on YouTube. That works, right? Nope, this is taking too long, I'm cutting it. Okay, so basically, it finished right after I cut it. Learned my lesson. Anyway, uh, it'll pop up a new installation thing. This is for the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment. Uh, before you click Next for this screen, uh, make sure you remember where you installed it to. You can change it if you want. I don't see any reason to, but just remember where it is, because we're going to need that later. Next. Oh no, this is probably going to take a while too. Ah, uh, uh, should I cut it? If I cut it, it's probably going to finish right away again. I could just read Reddit. Uh, okay, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to read some Reddit. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so it's done now. So you can just close it. And now we're almost done with the JDK. All we need to do is to set the path environment variable. And what is this? Oh, I want you to register. Okay, Oracle, I'll do that after the video, maybe. Close that for now. Uh, right, so to set the path environment variable, uh, well, before we do that, I'll tell you what it means. Basically, it'll let you run Java executables from anywhere in any directory. And if you don't know what exactly that means, neither do I, honestly. Uh, but everybody does it, so we're going to do it too. Uh, so, actually that was a pretty terrible explanation. Let's just check really quick. Why do we need to set the path environment variable for Java? Uh, I'm sure they have a, yeah, they have a nice explanation at this website here, if you're curious. And basically it says you don't have to, but uh, it's a convenience and uh, and you 
you should. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, if you're really curious, you can look that up yourself. Uh, I just do it because, like I said, everyone else does it. So, start. Right click my computer. Hit properties. Uh, and then I'm using Windows 7, so it might be different if you're using a different OS, but uh, if you want to know how to get to the settings that I'm going to, you can probably Google it. For Windows 7, you go to Advanced System Settings, then Environment Variables here, and then under New, uh, or User Variables for U, hit New, and for the name, put Path. And then for the value, remember when I said you needed to remember where you installed Java? Well, we can go there now and we can delete this installer now that we're done with it. So I installed it in program files, Java. Uh, it's going to be like something like JDK 1.7.0 uh, underscore 10. This is an older version that I used to have. Anyway, go there and find the bin folder and then take the directory from Windows Explorer, copy it, and I'm not using hockey so that you can follow along on YouTube better, paste it in here, and hit OK. 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 Close list. And then just to make sure that it's done correctly, open up command for Windows 7, just type CMD, it'll pop up, click it, and type J-A-V-A-C. And what should happen is uh, a bunch of stuff pops up. If it doesn't, it means something went wrong and you may want to start over to see what it was. But that should happen. So hopefully that happened for you. And if it did, we can move on to the next part of the tutorial, which is uh, the Android SDK. So I should close this. Again, I don't know what the website is, but... We can just Google it, of course. Android SDK. And the Android SDK is the SDK for Android that'll let you... SDK is Software Development Kit, by the way. It'll let you have the tools to develop for Android. It's probably the first link. And my computer is slow, so you have to bear with me. Oh. Okay, we can download the SDK bundle, or the ADT bundle for Windows, and that comes with Eclipse with it, but I think it's useful to learn how to install Eclipse because it's used for more than just Android. So we'll just go through download for other platforms here, and then don't go for the ADT bundle, go for SDK tools only. And then just pick the one that is for your system on Windows. Uh, you have two options, you can get the compressed file or the installer, I would get the installer. You should probably read that or skip through it. And again, we have to wait for my slow connection to download this, so yeah, I guess I'll see you in 11 minutes. Okay, so the download is done, but before we go take care of that, I found a better explanation for why we have to set the path variable. And it's the same search term we used before, second link, and what it basically says is, uh, you can run Java applications fine without doing it, or you can set it optionally as a convenience. And what it does is it allows you to run executables from any directory without having to type the full path of the command. If you don't set it, then you need to uh, specify the full path every time, like this. So it looks like it has something to do with command prompt stuff, so maybe we didn't have to do it. I also heard that Eclipse users can get away with not doing it, but it's there if you're curious, and like I said, uh, the only reason we're doing it is because everyone else does it. So, just to be safe, we did it. Anyway, so, this is done downloading. Run it. It's an executable. And again, I'm probably guessing we hit next a bunch of times. Uh, detect whether Java SE is installed. Okay. Next. Install for just me next. Uh, about this, you're going to want to remember where you installed it, just like the other thing. And actually, I'm going to change this because uh, I don't like where it's going by default. Um, I'm going to put it in program files with Java. Oh, hold on, let me copy this.
Okay, there we go. I'm gonna install it there. You can do that if you want. It's up to you. Hit next. Install. And let's just wait for it because it looks like it's pretty fast. Um, okay, done. That was great. Don't start the manager right away. Uncheck that and click finish. And then you can delete the installer. And then go to where you installed it. Um, oops. Android, Android SDK. And then we're going to use the SDK manager. Right click it and run it as administrator because you're going to get some errors if you don't. Or you might. So do that. And it should pop up in a bit. Okay, so right now it's looking for all of the stuff that we don't have that we need. And what you need to do is, basically we need to install all of this stuff. So check everything. And as you may have guessed, this will take forever to download, but it looks like I already have this installed for some reason. Whatever. Anyway, check everything. Hit uh, install 61 packages, or whatever the number is when you do this. Accept all and install. Okay, so it's downloading everything, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut because this will definitely take like an hour or two. Okay, so after a wonderfully long time, it did finally finish. One thing I did notice was that one of the things that install this Google TV add-on apparently is not compatible with Windows. I don't remember that happening the last time I did this, but it doesn't look that important, so I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, so with this done, we can close it, and now we just need to set the path for Android like we did for Java. So like before, start, computer, right-click, properties, advanced system settings, environment variables. Uh, now we want to edit the path of variable we made last time. And at the end of the value we had last time, put a semicolon. And then go to your Android folder that I told you to remember before. And go to the tools folder and then get that directory from Windows Explorer. Uh, copy. And then at the end of this, after the semicolon, paste it. So the new path variable value should be your Java directory, your JDK directory with the bin folder, a semicolon, and then this new uh, tools folder for Android. With that done, press OK, OK, OK. Close this, and that's it, the SDK is done. Uh, so that means, let me close this. We just need Eclipse. Eclipse is an IDE. Uh, which is an integrated development environment, I think. And it's basically a word processor, but used for coding. Again, not sure what the exact website is, but you can just search Eclipse, probably it's easier. And it's going to be the first one. And all these things I'm asking you to download, I'll put the, dis uh, the link in the description. But you can just search for it yourself. Once you're there at the download page, uh, there are a bunch of different versions for Eclipse. The one we want is uh, IDE for Java developers. So click that. And then you have all these different versions here. Get the one that makes sense for you, Windows 64 bit for me. There are a bunch of mirrors. Doesn't really matter which one you pick. Pick one of them, and it's going to go download. And I'm going to have to cut again because this is going to take forever again. Okay, it's done downloading, and the nice thing about this is that you don't actually have to install it. It's just a zip file, so you can extract it here with whatever program you like. I prefer 7-zip, because it's free and open source, and it should be really quick. And then you can just delete the zip file. And then what I like to do is I, cut, or I move the Eclipse folder to somewhere more convenient, like program files. I just hit Control-V in case you didn't notice. And then you can just run the program. And the first time you open Eclipse, it's going to ask you to set a workspace. It's 
so basically that's just the folder where you want to save all your projects and your backups and your settings and that kind of thing. I actually don't like using the default so I'm going to change it. I prefer having the workspace to be somewhere within the Eclipse directory itself. So there it is. You're also going to want to click this here. Basically if you don't, it's going to ask you to set a workspace every time you open Eclipse. So unless you want to change where you save all your stuff every time you open Eclipse, check that. And then hit OK. And hopefully it doesn't freeze my computer. My computer kind of sucks. And Eclipse opening sometimes uh, crashes it. So hopefully it'll work through just fine this time. Oh, we might have some trouble. Okay, we made it. And then you can close the welcome screen. This is the only time it will show up unless you want to see it again. And what we're going to do now is install the ADT plugin, which I think stands for Android Development Tools or something. Basically it's a plugin for Eclipse that makes it a lot easier to work with Android. So click Help. Install new software, add, and the name can be whatever you want. ADT makes sense, so I'm going to put that. The location, I can't quite remember, so I'm going to go look it up. And you can get uh, the URL for my website like I'm doing right now or you can get it from the YouTube description which I'll probably put or you can just pause the video right now and copy it just make sure you get the S here it's after the HTTP and then hit OK and it'll say pending which means it's looking for all the things that Eclipse can download from this URL and when it's done uh, you can start downloading so, since this is probably going to take a while again, I guess I'm cutting it yet again. Okay, it's done. You have two options, the developer tools and the NDK plugins. I can't remember what NDK stands for, but I think it's the stuff that lets you code with like C or C++ or something for Java apps or for Android apps. Since we're not going to be doing that, just select the first one because that's all we need. And then hit next. And I might cut it here. Depends how fast this goes. Darn it, looks like I'm cutting it again. I just came out of a cut. I'm kind of getting tired of stopping and starting recording all the time. Okay, but I won't make you wait through this. I'm going to cut it. Okay, we're back. Click next. And there's a bunch of licenses you might want to read uh, when you've read them or skimmed them or whatever. Accept. Finish. Oh shoot, don't tell me there's more cutting. I don't want to cut anymore. Maybe this will be really quick. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to be really quick. Okay, let me cut again. Okay, this thing popped up. Uh, it's some sort of security warning. Apparently, uh, we can't establish the authenticity of this thing. Just ignore it and hit OK. And hopefully this will... Yes, it's done. Okay. It's going to ask to restart Eclipse, so hit yes. Mm, again, hopefully it doesn't crash here. Uh, so what we're doing next is we have to tell Eclipse where uh, our Android SDK is. So I guess we can do that right now, actually. We gotta go find the uh, location for the Android SDK again. Once you're there in the Android SDK folder, copy the uh, directory. And then when Eclipse is open, go to Window, Preferences, click Android, Okay, I guess we don't have to because it looks like it automatically detects it. If yours didn't, just paste the SDK location here. Otherwise, you don't have to do anything. Actually, go back to Windows Preferences, 
there's something else here we should take care of. Go to, click the arrow next to General. Uh, then click the arrow next to Editors. And then click Text Editor. And check Show Line Numbers. That'll be really helpful later on. And click OK. Uh, so we're super almost done. We just have a little bit left to do. At the top right here, there's the button. Uh, the Open Perspective button. Click it. And let's open DDMS. Click OK. And then click the same button again. And let's also open Debug. Click OK. We're going to be using the Java uh, perspective for the vast majority of the time, but those two will come up sometimes in our tutorials. And that, I think, is all we need. Okay, we've got the perspectives. Uh, now, the only thing I have to do is to create the ABDs. An ABD is an Android virtual device, which basically emulates phones so that you can test your programs on your computer to see how they would run on other people's phones. So, to do that, you have to go to the top up here, and it's this picture of a cell phone with the Google mascot inside. And I already have one set up, it looks like, but let's delete it, and we'll set up a new one. Okay, so click new, and let me zoom out. Name, whatever you want it to be, device. Uh, so basically you want to pick a device that is as close as possible to what your end users will use. So, I don't know, just pick one. And then the rest of it should actually populate automatically. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. If you want, you can mess around with the settings. Uh, but otherwise, you can just hit OK. And it looks like I can't have a space in my name, so I'm going to fix that. Hit OK, and we have our device. Uh, basically, we're done now. We have everything we need to start writing code. There's one thing we should probably test, though, and it's to see if basically everything is working as it should be. And to do that, let's go and go back to my site. And you can hit Projects, and then download the source for the Tipping Calculator project. What we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, I'll run this with our clip set up to see if it works properly. So extract here. Oops. And then move it to your workspace in Eclipse. You don't have to, but it's easier, I think. Okay, there it is. Go back to Eclipse uh, again. The, the download link is going to be on the YouTube description, so you don't have to worry about that. And you can get it from my website too. So go to File, Import, click on the Android arrow here, select Existing Android Code into Workspace, click Next. Uh, click Browse to find the directory, and it should be in your workspace. wherever you put that to be, right here. Click OK. And then make sure to click or to check this thing here, copy projects into workspace, and then click finish. EGIT cannot detect where Git is installed. Uh, if you care about Git, you can can worry about this. I'm not going to. I'm going to check. Do not warn again. And click OK. The environment home is not set. Uh, oh, I think you were supposed to set the home environment for Eclipse. Um, let me check real quick. Why do we need to set the home environment for Eclipse? Oh, it looks like it's a good thing again. Uh, so, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it, because that's not something I care about. And it's not something that you need for our tutorials, at least for now. 
Okay, so the, the thing is in here, before you can run it, you need a run configuration. So click run, go to run configurations, uh, highlight or select Android application, click the new launch configuration button, and then call it whatever you want, run config alpha. Okay, uh, project, browse, main activity, uh, and then click target. And oh, one thing I should mention is when we made the Android virtual device, you should probably make more than one. You should probably make a bunch. And that way you can test all your programs on multiple uh, uh, emulated devices to see if they work properly with all of them. So if you did make multiple, you can click uh, always prompt to pick device, or you can click automatically pick this one. And then hit apply. And then hit run. And what we're looking for is the AVD to launch and then run the tip calculator out properly. And if it does, then great, everything is working fine. And if not, then presumably you diverge from the tutorial somewhere along the way. Or maybe there's like a difference between uh, Windows 7 and whatever OS you're using that created the problem. But. I don't know, I guess you can Google the problem, or, or you can email me, or, or contact me on YouTube. But hopefully that's not relevant. Hopefully it'll just work. Uh, usually, here's the thing about AVDs. They're really slow, and they take a long time to load. So if your app runs really slow on the simulated device, don't worry about it. On a real cell phone, it'll be a lot faster. And actually, you can also test if you have an Android phone. Uh, what you can do is go into your phone settings, Find the developer options and under there check USB or USB debugging. And once that's set up, you can just connect your phone to your computer and it should show up in the list of devices when you're uh, setting up your run configuration. And if it doesn't, uh, some phones have different quirks that you need to work with. I know some Sam Samsung phones, for instance, you actually need to download uh, software from their company. Uh, I'm sure there are other phones like that too. Anyway, uh, I'm tempted to cut it again, because I don't want to have you guys wait here with me. Um, but it looks like it's almost done. Um, but yeah, once you're done with this tutorial and you have everything set up, you'll be able to follow all my other Android tutorials without a problem. So that's good. Yeah, I'm maybe going to fast forward through this part while we're waiting. Because I don't want to waste your time. Oh, nope, we're good. Okay. Uh, it looks like it didn't start the app straight off for some reason. That's weird. Okay, there we go, it's starting. Again, like I said, the virtual devices are going to be super slow. Okay, but it's working. Uh, and don't worry about the X's here. Uh, that's just the image file I use that has the X on there. Uh, you can test it by clicking here and then putting some numbers. If nothing terrible happens, then good. It looks like the app is working properly. And that means you have the settings set properly. Again, like I said, if you don't see this, if something comes up, Google there or just email me. Okay, this has been a tutorial on how to set up Android uh, and Eclipse. Uh, thank you and good night.